The More in Minutes series gives you a quick hit, easy to apply tips for getting a little bit more out of SAP Concur Solutions than you already have, so you can bring more control over spending, more value back to the business, and get more time back in your day. In this More in Minutes video, we're going to look on how to get started with intelligence. Let's dive in. Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to run a standard report within the reporting tool. The first step that we need to do is log into the reporting tool itself. So the first thing you have to do is come over to the SAP Concur homepage, come up to the header level here, and hover over reporting. When you hover over reporting, a drop-down will appear, and you'll see one of two options, either analysis or intelligence, depending on the level of reporting that your organization has purchased. The only real difference between the two is access to Report Studio, which is our report building tool, and report scheduling options. Let's click on intelligence. A new window will open, and it will bring me directly to the reporting homepage, which shows your recent activity. So any report you have recently modified will show here. You can also view this page in tile view, which is the view you see now, or the list view. On the menu to the left-hand side, you will see team content. It's a public folder, meaning that anybody with reporting access can log in and access the items in team content and run any of the reports listed in the subfolders here. As I mentioned today, we're going to be looking specifically at running a standard report. I'm going to click on the Intelligence Standard Reports folder, and when we get in here, we're going to see that reports are further organized based on its topic that they pertain to. For instance, if I'm looking for a credit card accrual report, I'm going to go into the Accrual folder. If I come into here, I can see any of the reports that are standard that pertain to accruals. At the very bottom, I see the unassigned credit card team's actions. This is the report I'll use as our example today. So there are a few different ways that we can run a report. The first one being we can click on the report name itself, which will run that report in a default format, which for all standard reports is HTML. You can check what the default format is by clicking on the ellipsis on the right side of the report to bring up the report menu. Click on properties. Click on Report Options, and you can see the format listed as default, which is HTML. On non-standard reports, this area will be available for you to make changes, and the format can be changed to Excel, Excel Data, PDF, HTML, CSV, or XML. So for instance, the unassigned credit card transactions, if I ran this right now and clicked on the report name, it would run in HTML and would appear in my web browser for me to review. If for any reason you do not want to run the report in the default format, you will click the ellipsis on the right side of the report line to bring up the report menu, and you will select the option to run as. Once in here, you will see you have the option to change the format. In this section, we can select how we would like to view our report, what format we would like to see it in. And once you selected that, Come down here and click run if there's nothing else that we would like to do. If we want to take it one step further and say we want to email this report to people after it does run, we're going to come back to the top and click on run in background. The run in background screen is going to give us a few different options to choose from. Here we could choose if we want to run the report now, which will show the report immediately in whatever format I select, or I can choose to run the report at a later date and time. Below that, we see the option to have the report prompt page appear, which is selected by default. If you want to run the report wide open, you can turn off the prompt option, but I will leave it on for today. Below that, we have formats. I can run it as one format, or I can select multiple ones if I want to see how it's presented in different ways. So for now, I'm going to select HTML, PDF, and Excel as my example. And then below this, we have our delivery options. The first one you'll see is checked by default. This is saving from the report as a report view, which will appear in your My Folders for you to be able to run it at any time. Right below that, we also have the option to send the report by email. Right now, I'm going to select that, and we're going to go into the Edit Details area. In the edit details area is where I'm actually able to list out any recipients that I want to receive this report when it runs. By default, you will see your user credentials here, and you can remove it by clicking on the X here. 
And for now, I'm just going to put in my email address. We'll see down here at the bottom that we have the attach report output option, which is checked by default. So when this report is ran, the email will be sent out and the report will be an attachment for that recipient. Now we can click on the back arrow next to send report by email and that will save my recipient information. We can confirm that we're looking right here. And then we'll go all the way down to the bottom right and hit run. Now, because we left the prompt me option enabled, you will see the prompt page appear. And what this allows you to do further is filter your report based off of certain data items. So you can kind of scope the information that you're looking at a little bit more closely to fit your needs. In this example, the unassigned credit card transactions report allows me to select specific payment types that I want to look at instead of looking at all of them at once, if that's not what I'm trying to do. For today, I'm going to leave it wide open and I'm not going to select anything to filter by and I will hit finish in the lower left to complete the running of this report. After that, I will see a banner at the top of the page, which will tell me if the request to run the report was successful and it will disappear in a couple of seconds. Now the report is running and it will be sent to me via email. And also we can come over to the my content area, which is only going to be accessible by the individual user. If I click into that, you see, I have a long list here. I can click on the filter by option and check report views. Now at the very bottom, I see I have the report view of unassigned credit card transactions report that I can come in and rerun at my leisure. Now, if you click on the ellipsis to bring up the menu options, I can select view versions to view my report output. From here, click on the date to expand the list and see all of the outputs in the three formats that I selected when running the report. So I'm able to click on the HTML to view the report in the web browser or download either one of these other formats, which are in PDF, Excel, to review them whenever I would like. And then there you have how to run a report within the reporting tool. Thank you for watching this More in Minutes video on getting started with intelligence.